Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host, Scott Ramph, and I'm here to talk about all sorts of wonderful things. I got a lot of guests on the show for today. I got Kathy Olson and Becca McCarran. They're talking about some traffic signal boxes. Um, they're looking for people who are interested in it, taking part of that, and they'll be on the show to talk a little bit more about that and how you can apply for traffic signal boxes. There's also, we have another guest from, uh, let's see, Missoula garden club and they are doing a nomination for uh garden so you can nominate your neighbors to say like oh you have a pretty garden let's nominate you so th we'll have a little bit more information from pan diamond later on in the show today uh we got some news we got some weather we got flagship friday we got a whole bunch of art clips to show uh for today um, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the, this is the last day of our media summer camp, so I'll talk about some of that live show. I got some city council, and I got some, uh, let's see, I got pre-critic as well. So let's kick things off with a little bit of weather. Uh, the weather is looking a little hotter after this weekend. You can expect your highs to be 76, so this is, might be the really, the last of the nice uh, cooler warm days. Saturday is going to be a high in 80, but then Sunday is going to jump up to 88 and only continue to rise by Monday. Summer solstice is behind us, but the heat is soon to follow as Monday. We're going to expect house highs into 92 degrees outside. It's going to be mostly sunny pretty much starting today all the way through Monday um, for your weekend. So I'm excited. It's a great way to get out and about. This weekend is going to be great for all that kind of stuff. And I'm excited especially because next week is the Raptors of the Rocky summer camp, which is full, sorry. Uh, but uh, we're going to go to Kate Davis's Raptors of the Rocky and we're going to learn about birds and we're going to go outside and film some wildlife in and around the Missoula area along the way. So uh, that will be fun for the kids and we'll show all that next week with a bunch of uh, live cut-ins and the final show on Friday. So let's start off with a little, little, little bit of news. Um, if you haven't already heard, read this in the newspaper this morning, Mark, uh, Mark um, Karma has asked the Uni United States Supreme Court to review his 2014 uh, Missoula murder conviction. Karma was found guilty of deliberate homicide in, in December 2014 for shooting and killing 70-year-old German exchange student um, Dira Didi, who went, on, who went into Karma's uh, Grant Creek garage on April of this year of that year, apparently looking to steal alcohol. Karma's attorney, Nate Holloway and David M Nado, uh wrote uh, that they're filing that the case raises a pair of critical questions of the Sixth Amendment, the right to an impartial jury, and the ability of someone accused of in a criminal case to control his own defense. They also took issue with the jury instruction given by Missoula County District Court Judge E. McLean, Ed McLean. Uh, the jury was told about Karma's claim to justifiable use of force in the defense of an occupied structure, which under the law allows deadly force and an, uh, an occupant to uh, subject to bodily harm thinks that they are in danger of bodily harm or to stop for a forcibly felony. Even if the highest court in the county declines to take up this case, Karma should continue. Uh, Karma could continue to challenge his conviction with a civil suit. So this was from the Missoulian this morning. In the state, uh, northeastern Montana is has an extreme drought, um, which uh, which. Uh, as one of the state's largest wheat producing regions sees little rain. Uh, farmers across the 200 mile swath of the northeastern part of the state has just seen half inch of rain in the past two months. This trend of scant winter sh snows has farmers from Jordan to Plentywood nervous about the 2017 harvest. Um, in Westby and North uh, Dakota state line, there has been 0.59 inches of rainfall since April 1st. The normal amount of this period is four inches. The same is true for Fort Peck, in uh, Collinsburg, oh wait, Culberson, sorry about that. Um, the, an inch of rain since April has left the community three inches below average. And I got this from the Billings Gazette. Uh, the big national news is that uh, the senators, uh, be, uh, the House, be, um, House moved forward on repealing uh, the Affordable Care Act with their new uh, American Health Care Act. And now the a handful of uh, Dem uh, Rep GOP Republicans um, rewrote the draft basically is the same thing, but they changed the name to Better Health Care Act. Um, they o so basically, this is kind of some of the changes. The oldest people under oldest people under 65 would pay five times more than young people. Uh, Medicaid would be cut cut starting in 2021. A Medicaid coverage for long-term care could be cut as federal payments to state declines. Insurance companies would be required to accept all applicants regardless of health care status, but the draft would let states ask permission to reduce required coverage. A one-year block will be in place for federal reimbursements to care providers by Planned Parenthood. Service um, covered by Medicaid could be cut as federal funding 
to state declines over time, the cuts would be larger than those in the House bill. Um, Medicaid would not be required to cover uh, mental health after 2019. Uh, federal funding for uh, Medicaid expansion phases uh, cut between 2021 and 2023. In addition, eight states would have a trigger clause if the federal matching rate declines before the ACA promised rates, the expansion goes away immediately. Um, and then the last one, it would overall repeal the ACA taxes on corporate and the wealthy that pay for the insurance subsidies. So that's basically all that in a nutshell. Um, I have a bunch of guests waiting in the wings, so I won't keep them waiting much longer. So here is an art clip. Um, this is the, let's see. Oh, this is a whole brand new art clip for you guys, and this is happening at the Mozilla Art Museum, so you guys should check it out. And because later on the show, I have another art clip from the same museum, which is closing an, an exhibit. So um, when I come back, I'll have Kathy and Becca on to talk about traffic signal boxes. <laughs> Hey, we're back here with uh, Kathy and Becky, Becca, sorry. <laughs> and you guys are here to talk about the traffic signal boxes. You're looking for new applicants for this year's traffic signal painting of the traffic signal boxes. So if you've seen a couple of the um, art that's been done on all the traffic signal boxes, these are the folks you need to talk to if you want to do one. So let's talk a little bit about how people can get involved with the Public Art Committee in this. Well, thanks so much. Thanks so yeah, much for having you. us. Um, first of all, our this is our 10th annual Signal Box project. Wow. We started it in 2009 and have done it either once or twice a year since that time frame. And this year, um, we just we have a lot of interest already, but we wanted to let artists out in Missoula County, because it's limited to those artists in Missoula County, and remind them that the deadline is coming up. It's June 30th. Mm -hmm. Wow. And, uh, yeah, and so we, um, artists can go to, um, and Becca will help us with those websites, mm -hmm. but artists have to create a model along with their application mm -hmm. and that model has to be at least 12 inches high and replicate the artists the artwork that they're submitting so we want to make sure they have enough time to put that together as well as their application yep. so right. part of the application process is they have to have like a, a concept but mm -hmm. they also have Act to have a model too exactly right exactly right um, you can look for those are this art call specifically as well as well as other art calls in the future on our website at missoula public org as well as the city of missoula public art website so let's kind of go through this website um like let's go through the application process so i'm going on here and i want to apply so what sure. would I click you can on? click on art calls and current art calls and there is a link to the submittable page there where it says here and we've gone, a lot of the museums and galleries in the area have gone to a program um, that actually was developed in Missoula called submittable.com. Right, And right. would go through the application process there. It is so easy. Yes, so you just submit your online application through that link, and then as Kathy said, bring your live model. Um, cool. Yes. It, it basically tells you everything that you need to know. It tells but everything we what, need to know. What, what do you think people need to know before they go into this, before they 
You know, they just truly have an idea. One of the great things about the traffic signal box is project is it's open to Missoula artists, of course, and Missoula County artists, but there is no theme. So that is why when you drive around town and there are currently 47 signal boxes completed mm -hmm. out of 72 or 72 or 73 they're you know they're adding boxes but truly they are such a wide variety and that is what is so exciting so whatever an artist's media is and what what they would like to do is it truly can be replicated their their imagery and their themes can be rec replicated mm -hmm. on the signal boxes now and actually there's one of two ways to do it artists can either actually paint on site or they can actually have their imagery reproduced on vinyl at any of the sign shops in Missoula that actually print on vinyl okay. and then those shops will apply it and this year our award uh, for the artists has been raised to fifteen hundred dollars per box mm -hmm. so and all of that money then goes to the artists either for them to buy their painting supplies etc and their time and labor for actually doing the box um, or for um, using the vinyl and that whole vinyl mm. process. And how many applicants are you looking for? Oh my gosh, we have, well we have four boxes. Um, they are located throughout the city. There's um, one at the corner, there will be one at the corner of Wardens, one by Miller Creek and Highway 93. We have one at Russell and North mm -hmm. and also one at Garfield and South. Hmm. So, and we typically try to do about that many a year. So, you know, sometimes more, sometimes right. less. Um, right. All of this money is donated, so there is no line item budget amount within the city or um, public art budget. Cool. So we either get grants, foundation monies, or business donations, or individual donations. Great. So, um, I guess, what are some of the artists, I mean, like, we already talked about artist requirements, and I think the really cool thing about this particular thing is that it's uh, also open for non-conventional artists Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, cool. What can you tell us about, because, you know, my favorite is Courtney Blazon. She has a lot of cool <laughs> artwork as well, yeah. and she has one that she actually, not just the art, art box itself, but mm -hmm. the uh, the pole it wraps around. Right. She also did a little mm -hmm. bit of that. Right. So you're always looking for uh, folks who are creative and trying to think outside of the box and you help them along the way. Well, and the other thing is artists don't get to choose a box. So uh, what there is a selection committee and we jur jury the boxes and then we select our finalists and then we have the artists come in for an interview and talk about their designs, etc. Mm -hmm. And some boxes people will see is that they tend to be more pedestrian oriented in that they're in places where you there are more people walking and there's right. more to examine on right. the piece mm -hmm. and then others are more vehicular oriented and they're easy to see when you drive by and you don't have to stop necessarily and examine it acutely. Yeah, I think there's something beautiful about the project because yes, there can be professional artists, but also it's a community endeavor where we're looking for just creative people and you don't have to have been painting your entire life. You, you can just be interested and be creative and create something for Missoula to see. Yeah, yeah the goal is to have wonderful and beautiful and good art. Mm -hmm, and right. you know, there's uh, obviously we've, we've had a wide variety, variety of age groups. We've had um, students from high school. We've had um, mm -hmm. established artists. We've had people that have never been involved in the public art program before. And that's what we really like too, because there are artists who have maybe done commissions and had gallery shows, but they have not actually gone through a public art process where they actually sign a contract right. and look at and go through all of those phases mm -hmm. of really getting the piece um, approved and then done, etc. Mm -hmm. And this one is fairly easy, but it does it does introduce artists that have never dealt in the public art world those types of things that they need to go through. Right. Um, the other part of this is after we make the submissions. Um, or after we make the decisions rather, then all of the artwork will be done the same weekend as the Roots Festival, River City Roots Festival. And that's what we've done over the years too because there's a lot going on in Missoula. If the artists are out there painting or if the sign companies are out there with the artists applying the vinyl to the boxes, it's more of a festive atmosphere because there's so much going on in Missoula. Right. Great. So. Um, um, I think you n nailed it on the head. You talked about everything. Um, once again, uh, how can people apply to be artists? I'll let you take that. Yeah, I think just go to our website, missoulapublicart.org, and click on Art Calls, and that'll directly um, give you directions for the online application as well as where to submit your 
um, physical model or go to the City of Missoula website to um, public art cool. and they can direct you there. Awesome. Thank you guys for joining me. Yeah, so thank much. you so much. We hope to see a lot of applications. Yes. And once again, uh, application deadline is June 20th. 30th. June 30th. 30th. Oh, June 30th. 30th. June 30th. <laughs> yeah, it's the end of the month. Yes. Uh, next Friday. That's right. And you, anybody can apply. Anyone can apply. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks, thanks guys for joining thanks me. Thanks so much. Thank you. And we'll be back uh, with uh, Pam Diamond right after, wait, right after this. Hey guys, we're back here with Pam Diamond, and she's here to talk about uh, a, a little event that's happening, and it's uh, it's where you can nominate your neighbors for best garden, best yard, and all that stuff with the Missoula Garden Club. So let's talk a little bit about this. What's happening? Okay, we have a contest this year. It's called the Show Us What You've Got contest. And it's, Missoula, as you know, is known as the Garden City. And so we have some beautiful, beautiful gardens in Missoula, but unfortunately, we don't really have a means of sharing them with, uh, with anybody except our very nearest neighbors. And so the Missoula Garden Club thought that it would be great if we provided a venue for people to share some of the beautiful things that they create. And so we have this little contest where we're uh, having our contest just in container plantings or flower beds and shrubs or rock and water gardens. We have some beautiful water gardens in Missoula. People have great fish and yet people don't even know they're there. Some beautiful rose gardens and then um, just maybe an overall landscaped yard. Nice. And so sometimes if people have um, just a something that they've created that they're that they're really proud of even just a corner in their yard now it can be nominated as part of this contest and so it'll be really fun yeah and this is a good excuse to have bragging rights and it's like it's like yes. uh, this is a way that the grass is greener on the other side oh <laughs> nice pun intended oh. yeah there you go but uh your deadline is deadline for submission is Dead july 15th july 15th that's correct and people can get forms at any of our sponsors. Our sponsors are Montana Ace Fancy Plants, Benson's Farm and Gardens, uh, the Pink Grizzly of course, Earth and Wood, Marshies, and Karis Nursery. And so there are submission forms available there or you can submit online too to, I uh, have to look here, bbmcgin at aol.com. Yep. Um, and to submit all you need is one great photo and then um, the process yep. will go um, after the photos are, are submitted by July 15th, then we'll review those in each of the categories and then um, people will be notified and then between August 1st and 4th, we will actually get to make a trip to the garden yep. itself. So people uh, can nominate, like they submit by July 15th, but mm -hmm. then they have the whole month to get it nice and prepped 
keep their uh, make their garden even keep be- it alive yeah yep. there's always that <laughs> keep their, my, make yeah. their garden even better by the time you guys get there that's right or oh, and and so and then we'll just you know assess them on uh, between the first and the fourth and then the exciting part is is that the prizes will be given at the floriculture building during the Missoula County Fair because the garden clubs in charge of the floriculture building also that's one of our projects um, and so the Blue Star Memorial, and then we do Christmas wreaths. And so um, it's a great way for people to nominate their neighbors, nominate themselves. Um, maybe they're too shy, yeah. get somebody to nominate them. Um, but we're really hoping to have a, a widespread participation. It's a great project and a great way to share. Great. And um, the uh, and you announce winners during the Missoula, Western Montana County Fair. Western Montana Fair, yes. yes. Oh, county. Oh, yeah, Western Montana Fair. Because uh-huh. it's not just the county. It's no. like everybody. It's in everybody Western. counts. Yeah. yeah. So you guys can submit. Um, again, the uh, email to submit to is BBC, oh, BB, not BBC America, sorry, BBMCGIN at AOL.com. That's correct. Yeah. And or pick up those forms at our sponsors. Great. And okay. your sponsors, you can pick it up. Pink Grizzly, Ace, Earthwood. Or Earthen Earthen Wood. Wood, Marshies, Karis, Benson's. Yep, all those places. We'll probably have all these flyers up saying... They like, have flyers. You have, you have the garden. Beautiful. Where are they? Yep. There they are. The beautiful flyer, and this is the application form. So people are welcome to apply. But more, even more than people applying, be sure and nominate your neighbor. Because yep. I know when you look over the fence, you see great stuff. Yeah. So it'll be really fun. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining me, Pam. This is Pam Diamond, and she's yeah. with the, the Missoula Garden Club. Uh-huh. And you guys have until July 15th to submit yourself, nominate your neighbor for best garden in Missoula. Yes, thank you very much. And we'll be right back right after a few new programs that will be airing on MCAT. So, um, but you always had a buddy, and your buddy was always watching you. Um, and if you were doing anything that was unsafe in terms of contaminating yourself, you know, your buddy would tell you or you'd go out. At one point, I was in the Ebola treatment unit and I backed up against a nail that was in the wall and it tore a hole in my suit. And I immediately left and decontaminated myself and took a break and went back in. So we were very, I think the reason none of us came back with Ebola is we were very, very judicious. So there was... Um, Dr. Reese and Dr. Nahid and, and Nurse Kate, and that's how, you know, they knew us because the patients didn't see us. I mean, all they could tell, the only way they could tell who we were is by our height and our body build. So this is how we'd go to work every day. Everyone was trying to get um, out of Afghanistan. It was very unsafe. Um, some people, they moved to Pakistan, some moved to Iran. Uh, and the problem was that Iran government was not um, supporting refugees. My mom and my father, they were never in a school. But they knew how hard it is to live um, with no education. So my dad tried so hard going from one office to another office just to get in, trying to get some kind of like documents to let her um, his children going, go to a school. Um, so we were so lucky, uh, my siblings and I, we um, finally got some documents and we were able to go to public schools and uh, we started the schools. This is your firefinder here, so we're going to make you the lookout, okay? So if you're my lookout here and you see some smoke over there, what you're going to do is turn this around, look right through that little slot there and line it up with this hair here going up and down. Well, that's cool. Okay, and you kind of turn it around so you got it right lined up. Now you look right here and you get your angle from the lookout. And so you read here, there's 360 little numbers around here, so you'd find that number right there. Now you go over here to the phone. We'll make you call it. So you take the phone, you crank it, and that's ring, ringing a bell down in the ranger station. You tell them I've got a fire. I've got a fire. And you tell them the angle. Well, it's that time of the show on Friday where do you pre-critic. Um, imagine yourself needing to sneeze, and yet you can't sneeze. Well, that means it's pre-critic time, so let's kick it off. Oh, not that. With this, another movie by Michael Bay, 
with the Transformers. So, so let's kick it off. Uh, remember how much you like the Transformers? <laughs> well, forget all this as we dive into a, yet another cash grab from Michael Bay to pay off his Boeing 787 private Dreamliner. Of course, it's probably not true. I just made it up. Um, in this crazy excuse for a movie that teaches us that King Arthur's mythos for the another time is that King Arthur hung out with some Transformers. That's could be cool, right? But it's not real because it's a movie. Uh, we'll be getting plenty of King Arthur pretty soon when Disney's live actions, their uh, original cartoon, Sword in the Stone, they're actually going to make another, another live action of that. Um, and I got to say, I'd rather watch the OG um, Sword in the Stone movie than Transformers and the live action. Oh, okay, I'm, I'm kind of getting into a rant about Disney because I do have a Disney movie I'm going to talk about later. On, blah, blah, blah. But anyways, Transformers, The Last Night, premieres this weekend. And... Yeah, you know, it's less than meets the eye, so you you know what you can expect from this movie. But what you with the next movie, uh, it's like one of those movies that are like really popular with indie filmmakers. So they were just like, oh, let's have a theater theater through th theatrical <laughs> release. So this one is um, the world's nicest man, Keanu Reeves, plays a bad guy in this post-apocalyptic world where a girl must survive a group of cannibals while still finding true love. That's actually part of the synopsis. It's, it's completely ridiculous. Um, um, but, you know, I'm not big into cannibalism, yet I like making zombie movies. It, it's weird. But before you get into that zombies aren't the same as humans and eating people, just remember that George Romero actually made zombies as a, um excuse for the uh, mindless consumers of American culture back in when malls were getting popular. But anyways, this movie's uh, Keanu Reeves is a bad guy. You got Jason Momoa. You got uh, introducing uh, some kind of girl as the main character for this movie. So... This is the movie that's coming out, and um, I've heard a lot of critics are saying it's a great movie. I, I don't care. <laughs> Moving on, uh, I know this movie came out last week, but I didn't do a show all net all last week. But let's get into some Cars Three. I know Cars Three, um, but it, you know, you know, it's the third time around. It's basically the it was. It's kind of like they're just kind of forgetting that the sequel ever happened, and this is basically um, Cars Two reboot. In a way, so they're okay. So it's a whole idea where the world is replaced by cars. I, I basically, if you try to explain to your kids why ca these cars have eyes and tongues, it's it's even more confusing. But you gotta understand, it's just a movie. It's just a movie that has talking cars, and they live just kind of like the human component of their lives. I think it's mostly like an alternative reality where you do it. But anyways, watch this movie. It's basically like a Rocky Three kind of movie. Um, and somehow they resurrected Paul Newman's voice. So Paul Newman was uh, last role was Cars, the original movie, before he died uh, back in 2008. So they re re brought his voice back as uh, in this movie. So we're going to see how that works out. But it, it hasn't been the first time an, a cartoon or a Disney film actually brought back the voice of a dead actor. They did it a long time ago with uh, The Great Mouse Detective where they brought back Basil Rathbone. Um, he died um, in 1967. And that movie, The Great Mouse Kit Det Detective, um, came out in 1986. So there was even a larger gap between uh, a, a time of when uh, the actor died and when they recycled their old voice. So you can expect all these movies and more playing in your theaters right now. So um, I got a new Flagster Friday for you guys. It's it's I had to basically change out the music in the background because we used uh, the original music from Tokyo, uh, of Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift, but I didn't want to use it because I get flagged by YouTube. Um, they're robots. Um, so I replaced it with just a generic um, public domain type song. So without further ado, here's the news flagship Friday video of the week. And when I come back, I'm going to talk about MCAT news and what you can expect with all your summer camps and summer camp live cut-ins that are happening this summer on MCAT Channel 189. Oh no! 
You're coming with me. Okay. Wait one second, a little more careful next time, all right? Um, you're never gonna see this again. What? You're gonna go to jail forever. What? It's just a minor offense. If he did have night vision, you won't have to worry about Trump. <clears throat> anyway, did you know that these little bikes are illegal? Um, no, man. I'm sorry, man. It's not that illegal, man. It's just, it's, it's just like a clown bike. Why are they allowed in that? First, this person's giving me crazy eyes, and this guy, he's trying to deport me. So what's the deal? Well, she's single. Not in this town. You know, I'm just trying to live my life free like you. You know, living life in the fast lane, or the semi-fast lane, because as long as I'm going over a speed limit, you can't do, um, yeah, yeah. Well, you're riding your bike fast on the sidewalk. You hear that sidewalk, not fast, annoying side bike lane. Well, well, what do you want from me? What do you want me to do? Not live life in the semi-fast lane, hmm? You're going to jail. There's no way you can get out of this car. Well, there is one way. There is an experimental program where you help us with all sorts of crime because evil's a foot. Hey, can I have my shoe back? It's, um, it's uncomfortable. <laughs> And, uh, well, I forgot to mention that was the last Flagship Friday of this, uh, of, of this year before we start the new season um, when Flagship starts up again in October. So, um, yeah, I totally did not, like, tease it at all. So, sorry about that. So, um, <laughs> so I just want to give a quick couple announcements. Uh, today at MCAT uh, um, is the last day of MCAT's summer media camp. With this whole week, the kids got a chance to wander around and check out other stations along the way as learning a basic editing, podcasting, voiceover recordings, doing all sorts of uh, mixed media type of stuff while they were here. Um, and we'll be presenting all those videos that the kids have made today at 5 p.m. You can also watch online MCAT.org. MCAT.org is a great resource for anybody who wants to find out where you can watch any of our shows anytime, even um, shows that have already aired. You can watch it anytime. You just go to MCAT.org. You click on channel 189, 
and you basically can either watch live, which it is me right now, but if you watch this online, it's not. So you can hit watch on the very top right hand corner, you can watch it, but of course you can see the entire schedule and the most recent uh, videos that we post on here go from the top left and they work their way to the right and then back away to the right. So that's kind of just like kind of like the, the short in it all, just kind of like going through all that stuff. But if you want to learn more information about my morning show and check out interviews and more, be sure to go to my website, wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice, we made you write it all, all twice. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, uh, Facebook, and you can follow me on Twitter. It's all Wake Up Missoula. You can't miss it. You could, if you click on videos, you can see past episodes, past videos, past specials. Uh, Flagship Friday, you got dubbing stuff. We got uh, interviews uh, that we just had recently. And we got my whole entire stop motion anthology that you guys can watch anytime and I suggest you watch it because it is pretty amazing and I am the most humble person I know uh, <laughs> but let's move on to our next um, subject in this morning show that I do every Wednesday and Friday City Council Public Safety and Health um, if you don't already know this, that the city of Missoula is having, is, uh, the Missoula City Police Department is uh, having a new evidence facility where they're going to store evidence. So they're putting money into an old building, which is across from um, West Side Lanes, the only bowling alley in Missoula right now. Um, and it's uh, uh, also across from the, the new Missoula Food Bank. So that whole area is getting a nice little um, economic boost in the area. So they're going to be having a new evidence facility where they keep a lot of evidence for a lot of court cases and whatnot like that and they're going to be spinning upwards to let me just double let go back to my notes uh so let me read the synopsis the city council approved construction of the police evidence facility in 2017 cip program and awarded the design contract to mmw architects this spring mmw will work with the jackson contractors group on the facility's design the construction manager at risk contract is for $3,750 in pre-construction services, plus 4.25% in project costs. The total project cost um, uh, pro uh, you know, projection for this cost is estimated between $1.7 million and $2.2 million. And this is, uh, John Debari kind of reacts to this, uh, why is there a, a gap between those two um, 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 estimates? And Dale Bickle answers said that the budget's really tight, and so I'm kind of curious, how is it that there could be $500,000 wiggle room? Just if you could explain why we have the 1.7 sure, and the 2.2, that would be helpful. Yeah, there's, there's um, um, variations in, 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 the, in our early estimates related to the cost. There are, there are, um, um, Add alternatives that we could do related to it, and then there's some items that we would like to do depending on the budget and how things cost out. So at the 2.2 level, it's going to be it's going to be a stretch, and we have to really determine whether we, we can do those. At the you know 1.17 is funded, and so it's just you know how things change and how if we can get cost down in other areas, and that's and that's a really uh, um, important aspect of the CMAR because they're they're able to do that you know before the before all the contractors see the the, the bid specs are done they'll see like we don't either understand this piece or we this is this is this is an expensive construction technique if we did it this way we're going to save some so hopefully that that value will you know stay low and we're not you know coming to you to say hey we really want to get this done and we want to increase that that capital improvement program or something like that all right so that was uh, Dale Buckle Dale Buckle in response to John DeBar's question about the um, the gap between the low and the high estimate of the cost for the new um, police evidence facility moving on the project is funded through three programs which include a general fund and the motion went on to the consent agenda so members of the West Side Neighborhood Association approached council members from Ward 1 and 2 from some health and safety concerns in the Hollywood Mobile Home Park on the west side. Neighborhood concerns include, but aren't limited to, the abandoned trailers and vehicles, drug use and sales, a burnt-out trailer within the park, a lack of active on-site management, and an apparent lack of momentum in addressing concerns. Um, Michaela Schaefer um, speaks on this in the, in the presentation about this. The West Side is um, a diverse community of families, young professionals, um, and retirees, and 
These uh, stats here were pulled from a recent North Side West Side resident survey where people identified um, the proximity to downtown and a sense of community as qualities they appreciate about their neighborhood. Um, why we are concerned, I mean, that being said, we do have, have concerns and um, in regards to health and safety. Last summer, um, a handful of Westside residents started commenting to one another, just, you know, at, in passing when we would see each other outside and, and chat <clears throat> um, about various incidents that we had been observing and experiencing in the neighborhood. Um, just amongst, I know, Kelly and myself, I had someone shoot a gun off on the corner of my property at about 10.30 at night one time. <clears throat> my husband, while mowing the lawn, came across two hypodermic needles um, that were on our boulevard where children play and in our alleyway. Um, Kelly witnessed and helped uh, a victim of a shooting. Um, she was the first person there uh, across the street from her home. Um, and that's just us. <laughs> um, we all had stories like this of crime, burglary, late night disturbances, shootings, hypodermic needles. Um, we gathered as neighbors to share our stories and observations in hopes that we would be able to identify the causes and possibly uh, some solutions to the challenges we were facing on the west side. All right, so that was uh, uh, Michaela Schaefer and her just commenting about some of the uh, introductory remarks that she has in her presentation. You can watch all the, pre the whole presentation in public safety and health by logging on to ci.missoula.mt.us. But here is another quote. And, uh, and um, so they did talk about the first-hand accounts of illegal and odd activity in the north side, west side neighborhoods, especially since the city of Missoula is moving forward on capital improvements on the infrastructure and overall commercial and residential possibilities of the north side north side is a uh, a booming area that they uh, that they have a major plan that they worked with our missoula growth policy and the north side is one of the top priorities in figuring out how they want to move forward and how they want to in increase because they have an industrial zones in the area as well but they want to have a mixed commercial residential there's a lot of areas up there that have a lot of potential um, so they're trying to work out uh, ways to some of the other um, looking at some of the problems that uh, the north side west side areas are having currently and trying to address those while they move forward in construction so i have this last quote from um michaela and uh, she dives into the root of the problem managing a mobile home park of this quality requires a lot of diligence um, frequent communication with your tenants and a very hands-on management approach um, if not, your property can quickly become a mess, both literally and figuratively. Um, it's not uncommon for debris and trash, abandoned vehicles, appliances, you name it, to quickly accumulate if park rules are not strictly enforced and if you don't have boots on the ground to monitor the property. It's also not uncommon for tenants to move out of, sell, or invite <coughs> others to move into their mobile home without any communication with or approval from the property manager. Um, if communication is poor between tenants and the manager and if expectations to follow park rules are not clearly set, it doesn't take long for homes to become abandoned um, lived in by unapproved tenants or sold to unapproved tenants. Um, what it really boils down to is that unless you are consistent and present and actively engaged with the management of a property like this, it will quickly get out of your control, and which is what I believe we are witnessing um, in the case of Hollywood. All right, so that was uh, the kind of the final quote I want to leave that on. If you want to see the whole meeting and they have this discussion, this item is kind of going to be open to a meeting. This is proposed by um, City Council Member uh, uh, Jordan Hess. I believe. Oh, man, I'm I'm starting to forget all the city council members' names, but I'm 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 getting a little better. So um, I I have a interesting story, kind of kind of relating to this kind of situation about when it comes to uh, renters and stuff like that. Um, because there's always uh, a lot of people who are homeowners have a tendency to be like, oh, it's the renters' fault. Oh, they're only here temporarily. They have no sense of community, that kind of thing. And I understand that there's a uh, there's that potential uh, risk of people like pointing it out at the renters. But just imagine yourself, you say, hey, I'm going to throw a party and you're at a party, you have invited all your friends and then your friends 
invite some of their friends and then their friends invited some of their friends you just, so you don't know a good group of people and so it's it's the unknown is the problem so one of the things is that uh from what they suggested is this like an overall uh, transparency and communication, um, but also without violating the uh, renters' rights as well. So that's just kind of like this kind of like what I think about when I think about this. So it's interesting when this kind of thing comes up in a discussion, and they're going to be discussing this as well. So if you live on the north side, west side area, you're in. Um, you should uh, look this up for any future agenda items meetings, and you should uh, report to your. Uh, a neighborhood council and um, if you have any problems with that as well so uh, that basically kind of concludes uh, the, your city council report of the day um, if you want more information you go to ci.missoula.mt.us for, for more information about everything that's happening in and around Missoula and you can watch meetings past meetings um, and you can look at upcoming agenda items in which um, are affecting you and you want to get involved and there is always looking for involvement for the city of missoula so if you want to get involved with city of missoula you go on their website and you can go to how do i and you can apply for a job license permit do all sorts of wonderful things you can apply to be on a board or commission in the city of missoula it's a good stepping stone if you're interested in getting into and getting involved with the city of missoula um yeah that's pretty much it with the city of missoula stuff i have an art clip for you guys to kind of bridge the gap between city council and uh, events so there's a bunch of events happening over the weekend um, and I'll talk a little bit more about it when I come back uh, but this uh, next art clip is uh, ending on let's see what's today's date today's the 23rd so this actually ends tomorrow and this is going to be at the um, this is the audio family collection and uh, that we just did a video about uh, kind of like a talk of people talking about the audio family and getting some words from that as well so you can watch that on our mcat.org video on demand anytime you can also look for it in the local listings but uh, here is the last time i'm going to play this art clip and when i come back i'll talk about events Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some events that are happening in and around Missoula. And if you want to learn more about events that are in and around Missoula, you can go to MissoulaEvents.net. And I'll tell you that one more time at the end. So uh, starting this morning at 10 a.m., uh, uh, Mineral County Mud and Country. So it's the first annual, really, really first annual. Anyway, <laughs> Mineral County Mud and Country. So join them. June 23rd, 24th, and 25th. So it's all, it's at the Tin Kelly Alley Amphitheater in St. Regis, Montana. Um, all sorts of great musicians coming together, and it's this nice little festival, kind of like their own mini roots festival. So you can do that. They have bands playing. You can find out more information by going on to MissoulaEvents.net. Tiny Tales of the Missoula Public Library at 1030. Um, for, this is from birth to 36 months, three years of age if you want to get there because you know 36 months like you don't you have to start counting years at some point um <laughs> so this happens every tuesday and thursday and friday at 10 30 a.m babies age um from birth to 36 months three years uh, are invited to and they're accompanied by an adult lap um, and they teach kids how to read it just like they read to kids they have a story time and parents are encouraged to sit with their kids and read books 
to them and with them. It's a nice little event that the Missoula Public Library holds for families. Um, free day at the Missoula Insectarium. So the Missoula Insectarium, you can come explore um, the Missoula Butterfly House. Uh, that's their website. Um, you can do it all day today, and they're celebrating their two-year anniversary on this day, and they'll be having a special book signing at 1 with Sneed Collard, an in insectarium supporter, a great photographer, and a writer of a variety of books. His latest book is Insects, the Most Fun Bug Book Ever, which is geared towards a younger, bug-loving audience. So you can do that, and it will be happening from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m., and the predator feeding time is at 4 p.m. where they'll be, I believe they'll be feeding Rosie the Chilean spider, um, all sorts of wonderful bugs and nasty stuff. So, uh, Tissue paper flowers at the Family First Children's Museum. They'll be creating flowers that are so pretty um, you'll be convinced that they're real. And this is happening at 11 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. at the Children's First Family Museum. Oh, no, wait, wait. Family's First Children's Museum. Got that flipped around. Uh, kids table at the library. So, if you have a kid that's um, let's see, under the age of 18, actually 18 and under, can go to the Mo Missoula P uh, Public Library in the large meeting room and have a free lunch. And it's provided by the Missoula Food Bank. Thanks, Missoula Food Bank, for offering that. Uh, they're going to be offering some stuff for us later in July as well. Um, so I just want to thank th them in advance for helping us with that in our summer camps as well. Teen Writers Group is going to be at the Missoula Public Library, um, and that happens from 3.30 to 5.30 p.m. The, the, if you have writing issues or if you want to be a more pro, pro, proficient li writer, sorry, I'm just like really struggling here, you can go to the Missoula Public, Public Library anytime between 3.30 and 5.30 p.m. and improve your writing skills because writing is very important, and especially there's been a lot of issues in terms of writing. Um, most recently with uh, people going into the workforce. So this is a good way to kind of jumpstart your writing careers. Uh, the Jungle Book at MCT is at 6 p.m. tonight. Um, MCT has all these camps, and this is one of their camps, and the kids will be for performing The Jungle Book at MCT um, at 6 p.m. The theater musical adaptation of The Jungle Book, Mowgli the Man Cub, has all these adventures and more. Join him as he escapes from the monkey people, out to tiger, and lists the helps of a rock, Python explores what it means to be human and learns the lesson from uh, the the brave mongoose Ricky Tiki Tavi. Original music and um, um, humor gives new life to the classic tale by uh, Rudyard um, Kipling. Um, and here are some of your musical events happening tonight um, if you plan on going out and about. A live music by Jammy Kid George Regan is going to be at Ten Spoon Winery. The Little Creek Band is going to be at Grey Wolf Casino. Karaoke Kaleidoscope is going to be at VFW. Joan Zen is at the Union Club, so if you love Joan Zen, you can hear her wail at the Union Club. Uh, Rutgut Wines is going to be at the Top Out Lounge. It's free rock music, so you guys can go to the Top Out and enjoy that for your Friday events. Saturday, let's kick things off with a little bit of Saturday stuff. So Saturday markets have been going on. They're going on strong. Um, it happens 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. You got the one at the Red X's. You got the one on Pine Street near the Thomas Mar Bar, and you got the one under Higgins Street Bridge, and they're all just wonderful. Get some produce and all that stuff. I always go there to get produce. I'm out of produce because I already ate all the produce I got from last Saturday. So I look forward to getting a lot more produce like onions, carrots, just all all wonderful things that are freshly grown in the Missoula County by Missoula residents as well. And it's really cheap too. It's like super cheap to get all this stuff. Um, so um, other things that are happening on your Saturday is Missoula Backcountry Horseman Summer Rendezvous, Blackfoot Clearwater Game Range, uh, Boyd Ranch Headquarters um, at 10 a.m. Summer Rendezvous. Enjoy a free barbecue and attend several backcountry skill session sessions Event starts um, and ends on the 25th. Uh, it starts tomorrow and it ends on the 25th. Um, let's see. They basically repeat a lot of the stuff in there. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, the hot dog. And this is the barbecue that's happening from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. And you can check out the waste, uh, their website and Facebook for more details. It's the uh, Boyd Ranch headquarters. Um, Global underscore Downtown Dance Collective is doing a, an annual event in which the underscore is practiced simultaneously for a three-hour period by people all over the world near Summer Solstice. The underscore is a long-form dancing improv improv improvisational reading, right? Who needs it? <laughs> Structure developed by Nancy Stark Smith and underscore prog uh, processes through a broad range of dynamic states, including long periods of very small, private, and quiet 
internal activity and other times of higher energy and interactive dancing. You can register by June 23rd and you can email them uh, trishaopsted at gmail.com but you can always look up Downtown Nats Collective and call ahead and be like, how do I do this? Let's go through this and it's really, it's open to all and it's $15. Uh, Montgomery Still Room Tour and Spirit Tastings. Montgomery Distillery is doing an annual uh, thing where they allow people to get a tour and kind of see how they go through the process of distilling and making their um, spirits. Um, so it's $5 bottle discount and you can sign up on their website at eventbrite.com and this event um, occurs every Saturday for one year. So it's pretty cool. Um, um, here are some of your Saturday night events happening. Um, you got the continuation of the Mineral County Mud and Country and the Tin Cali Amphitheater basically happening all day in uh, St. Regis. Saturday night live music series. Ocalette Wizard is Imagination Brewing Company live music. And Andre Floyd is going to be at Ten Spoon Winery. Jeff Carroll will be at Draft Works Brewery. Murs is going to be at Monks. It's hip hop. Um, you got absolutely the Christmas Moon of the Badlander, DJ music. Um, karaoke at VFW Bar. So we got karaoke this weekend at VFW. Um, all sorts of wonderful things happening pretty much all weekend long. I, I, I'll probably, I guess I can just kind of skim through all the Sunday events as well. Um, blah, blah, blah. Five Valley. Oh, there's a Five Valley Kennel club dog show happening on sunday so it's the, the missoula county fairgrounds starting at 8 a.m on sunday um let's see continuation summer maid fair is going to be at the karis park so if you guys are interested in a nice little maid fair it's kind of like a um knickknack fair and you get to go there it starts at 10 a.m at karis park they usually do in the parking lot in that general area you can't miss it missoula peace march is happening at the higgins street bridge starting at 1 p.m um, family story time, Boons of Public Library, Jazz on the River, Imagination Brewing Company, Scratch Dog, String Band is going to be at DraftWorks at 5 p.m. on Sunday, um, Community Dinner and Yard Games, uh, The Squid and the Whale is going to be playing at the Roxy. So the Roxy is, I would tell you what kind of movies are playing at the Roxy Theater. Roxy is a great venue for a lot of old cult classic movies, but also they do, do a lot of uh, movies that aren't going to be in the big theater as well. They're more of the independent um, films that you can't see in uh, movie theaters because a lot of big movie theaters are just like, we'll lose money if we play it here. It's like, okay, well, let's give it to the smaller theaters. And that's what they do. And the Roxy has picked it up since the women no longer um, shows movies at their venues. But they do show a lot of awesome bands that are happening at the Wilma. Okay, so I have two minutes. <laughs> um, I want to say uh, thank you uh, to all my guests for joining me. I'll just uh, do another little tease. Kathy Olson, Becca McCarran, uh, they were here from the uh, Public Art Committee um, in Missoula. So you go to missoulapublicart.org and you can um, submit online if you uh, are to any of their art calls and their traffic signal boxes. There's four traffic signal boxes they're uh, painting this year, and the deadline is June 30th. So you have until June 30th, which is next. Friday to submit uh, your art concept and thing. They'll interview you. You go. They'll go through the process, and you get to paint one of these fabulous art boxes and art installations as well. But they're looking for uh, those art traffic signal boxes, and um, they'll have any upcoming art calls along the way. It's a great way to get involved. Um, once again, there is. Uh, uh, Pam Diamond, I want to thank her from the Missoula Garden Club. They're doing it. You can nominate your neighbors for best garden, best yard, and all that stuff. Um, and you have until July 15th to do that. Um, let's see. And they will be announcing winners, and they'll be giving ribbons out at the Western Montana Fair. So um, one more time, you can find out more information <laughs> about me, um, a little self-promoting, by logging on to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. You can Google me. I'll be on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Um, you can also find MCAT at MCAT.org, MCAT TV, Missoula, um, MCAT Television on YouTube, Facebook, um, Missoula's Community Media Resource. Um, we have a uh, live cut-in with a whole bunch of kids happening today at 5 p.m. Be sure to check it out. we got a lot of great kids, a lot of very talented filmmakers, and I can't wait to see where they go from here. So for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Raff. Thank you for joining me this morning. Mm -hmm.